Welcome to this crash course where I'll cover the basics of web design for those looking to learn and improve their skills and make better looking websites. Topics I'll cover in this video will include things like color theory and its components, things like saturation and color psychology. But I'll also go over topography in detail, things like what's the difference between fonts and typefaces and much more. This will be a beginner friendly video and I'll try to cover the fundamentals of graphics design. So even if you haven't made a website before, this video will help. I aim to teach you the skills that often go unlearned by developers and designers, but they're also essential in making good user interfaces look clean and professional. So this video itself is actually pulled from the first few chapters of my own course called Teach Me Design. This is something I've been working on for the last two years to make into an invaluable resource. I've shared the link in the description, which gives you full access to it. And I've also placed this course and its materials on Milanote. It's also the sponsor for today's video. If you haven't heard of Milanote before, it's a tool that helps you organize your creative projects. Since it's a visual tool, it's perfect to help me organize this web design course. Let me show you how I actually put this course all together on Milanote. It was easier than I thought, especially since I had a lot of the assets ready and I put together the entire course in just a day. Like Figma or no code tools, I can simply drag and drop different elements onto a board. In this way, I could pass on different bits of information, tasks and workshops and outline which way they should be done in which order. I could create a new board so it kind of has like a nesting structure and each one of these had a chapter for my course. And for my videos, I could drag and drop them straight onto each board as well as create the lesson plan for each chapter too. Being able to combine pages from the book as well as the video content and workshops all in one place, I think is a better representation of how I would have liked this course to be. Once finished, it was ready on my mobile phone as well, since it works pretty much the exact same way with all the course structure essentially made for a mobile phone. I can now export and share these boards to to anyone, which is what I'm going to do in the link below. Here's the design course we'll be doing for this video. And as you can tell, it's quite visual. I've created columns here. So you just go through each one. And when you're done, you move on to the next, such as an introduction, chapter one on color theory, chapter two on topography. And I'll be adding more and more chapters as time goes on. If this is the very first time you're viewing one of my videos, it's worth joining my community. It's called Merge and the URL is mergewebdev.com. It's a community for developers who are learning to do a little bit of no code, AI and design. Okay, let's head back to the main board over here. So assuming you're jumping into this course, head to the introduction. Here, I've got an intro and forward. As you head to any of the modules, definitely check out the video I've put together, which covers the topic as a whole. If you do this whole course and like it, check out design for developers. There's more modules included here, and it's also a way to support this channel. As for this introduction, this course was put together by myself and George. You've got links to all our our socials here. And if you do enjoy it, feel free to share your comments on socials like on x slash Twitter. All right, let's begin with the very first chapter. This chapter will be all about color. And here I'm going to teach you a bit of color theory things like color temperature, saturation, and selecting colors. To begin, I'll just double click on this icon over here to take us into color theory. I've got this video you can check out in your own time. I've also got the pages from the course itself and some workshops we can do after we've completed this chapter. I'm gonna zoom into the very first page here about what color theory is, so you know what we're gonna be covering for this section of the video. So color theory is helping you understand what colors are and how they work. We'll do a few things, such as understand what primary, secondary, and tertiary colors are, how color hues and temperature work, saturation, tint, tone, and a few things like color psychology and weights. So to start off with, let's take a look at primary colors. I've put together this visual over here because there are only three primary colors. There's a red, blue and yellow. And they are from a color wheel that Isaac Newton put together in 1666, quite a long time ago. And yet they're still used to this day because when you combine them, you can create every other color. So let's have a look at how they mix together to create color harmony. If you mix certain colors together, like blue and yellow, you get green, red and blue make purple and red and yellow make orange. This is color harmony and it's mixing these primary colors to make secondary colors. And as you might expect, these can then create even more colors as we mix more and more together. Let's take a look. Tertiary colors 
are the actual colors that are mixed between primary and secondary ones. Things like vermilion, amber, teal, violet, and magenta. And if you look closely, these are starting to form a color wheel. The end result is this hue or color wheel that you get. You often see this when you're picking different colors. Adobe have this website as well that help you pick different colors. And I definitely recommend checking it out to try and select different colors, shades, and tones. These are things we'll be covering in future videos. And while picking different types of shades of an existing color is useful, Adobe's website also helps you pick things like complementary colors, which are different types of colors that work in harmony together. And this is something we'll be covering very shortly in this course. Now that you know some of the basics, it's worth doing the little workshop I've put together. Now, these will become more complex in future chapters, but this beginner one just asks you a few questions. Like, what are primary colors? What are secondary colors? What are tertiary colors? And what is the color wheel? Once you've done these, you can move on to the next chapter, which we'll do now. In the chapter one section on color temperature, I'm gonna double click on the board. It's gonna take us here to this video and this section for color temperature. I've got a diagram here, which we'll get into shortly, but let me explain what color temperature is. Just like in real life or in nature, color can have temperature with reds and orange and yellows being warm, while blues and greens and teals being cold. Now this temperature actually helps identify different types of activity a user might click on, depending on the color. This is why so often danger buttons are in red, while accept and confirm buttons are in blue or green. If you want to learn even more about color temperature, definitely check out the video in this section. Now let's take a look at saturation when it comes to color. If you haven't heard of the term before, saturation is essentially how pure a color is. By adding different amounts of white, gray, or black, we can reduce the saturation of a color. However, you don't always want full saturation. This is because it can be harsh on the eyes. So as a general rule of thumb, what you wanna do when you see a color picker is pick within the bordered section of this circle. Let's take a look at the terms we use when we're changing the saturation of a color. Tone involves adding gray to a color. Shade involves adding black to a color. And tint involves adding white to a color. And we can use a combination of these three to create a color that works well for a website. Let's do a small workshop exercise so I can show you what I mean. We're going to open up Wix Studio and create a new site and a hero section. I just want to set a background color and some text to show you how saturation works. Here in Wix Studio, I'm going to select to create a new site to show you how this works. I'm going to select the studio templates and I'm going to head over to wireframes so we can begin with a bit of a site that has some content on it. I'm going to select this one here in the middle, which is a multi-purpose wireframe. And I want to show exactly how saturation affects the color and content inside of a page. It starts off with this background image, which actually has a good saturation, but we're going to create our own. Deleting this background color, I'm going to select the background color option down here and select it to add my own color. You might see the color wheel represented here in these colors. Just pick a saturated color, picking from the option at the top right. Now to add some tint, shade, and tone. If you select anything closer to the white variants, you're adding tint. If you're adding anything to the dark colors, you're adding shade. Always consider what kind of content you have on the page. Since I have dark gray text, adding a bit of tint and tone, adding white and gray, makes any color in the color wheel here kind of look good with the content of this page. This is an example of how understanding tint, tone, and shade helps in the web design process. Once you've selected a color that works, you've completed this workshop. And if you want to preview your results, you can publish the page. It's time to take a look at how to select good colors for a website and its color scheme. It's both complex and simple, especially now that we know how the color wheel works, we can use it to help pick colors. So let's have a look at how that works. In order to pick good colors, we need to pick them in harmony. And that's why the color wheel helps. We can pick different types of colors based on the strategy of that color wheel. Let's have a look at the very first type, selecting a monochrome color. These are simply selecting a single color from the color wheel and adjusting the shade, the tone, and the tint. Pretty simple. Complementary colors, however, are selecting two different colors that are adjacent on the color wheel like red and green. These two create color harmony, and we can still add tint, shade, and tone to each one of them, making for a good color scheme. 
Moving to triadic colors, these are where we select three colors and they're all adjacent to each other. This is why we have purple, orange, and green. So if you're using a lot of colors on a website, this is definitely one way to do it. There's also analogous colors. These are multiple colors that are close together on the color wheel, like teal, green, and lime. Again, all these colors have harmony and so they look good together, though it never hurts to add some shade, tint, or tone to any of them. And that is selecting colors. So if you want to use one of these strategies for your own website, then definitely do the workshop. Actually, let's do it right now. We're going to create a color schema on the website we had earlier, and these will be using site styles. Select it here on the left and select colors. Now there are some pre-designed ones and we're going to create our own. Select the background and text one and select edit. And then from the color option over here, just select to pick one. Now you can pick your own. I'm going to select one and make sure you select something within the border that I showed earlier. So not too saturated and select apply. Now we want to create a few options that have a little bit more tone as well as tint. This means we'll be adding some gray as well as white to them. We'll need to copy the hex value for this primary color. We'll use this value for this second color, pasting it in just over here. But for this one, we'll add some tint and some tone, meaning adding some gray and white. You can see it's a lighter version. Continue to do this until you fill out this entire section. Now, something interesting to note is that the option here to see how saturated or bright your color is, is actually already built in here. You can actually add more tone by changing the saturation and more shade or tint by changing the slider for the brightness. In the background, you can see the kind of effect this has on the website, where the darker colors definitely stand out and sometimes you want to make sure there's a good contrast between the background and the foreground. For for the second part of this workshop, we're going to pick a secondary color to work as our action color. Heading back to the color wheel in terms of Adobe, in the color harmony options, select complementary. Select the same color you used for your primary color and on the opposite side of the color wheel, copy its adjacent color. This complementary color can be our action color or secondary color here and we're going to apply it. Since it starts off being a bit darker, add some shade to it, decreasing its brightness and remove some saturation. Then just like before, go through the spectrum and add a little bit of tone and tint to each one of these, creating a nice variation of options to choose from. Congratulations, you've now filled out the first two lines for creating your color schema. These now can be used throughout the website to create a consistent look and feel for whatever you're designing, from buttons to text to even backgrounds, because consistency is always key. And that completes our workshop for selecting colors. If you're wondering what's next, there's also color psychology, color weights, and color contrast. Each one of these sections actually has quite a lot to it, and I don't think I'll be able to cover everything in this video. And I'll also build out chapters for topography, components, UI, and UX. So if you enjoyed this and you want to continue learning, definitely click the link in the description. And I'd also like to thank Milanote for sponsoring today's video. Their visual tool for organizing projects into boards is pretty powerful. Additionally, they have dedicated boards for UI and UX designers and even for website plans and proposals. If you want to learn more about them, check out the link in the description, which is milanote.com forward slash codex community.